Hi everyone, welcome to this video entitled Introduction to QSpice, how to create new components. This is the first video in this new series that we are starting today, dealing with this new simulation tool called QSpice. In this video, we will see an introduction, then a basic simulation example. We will show how to create new components and we will present an example the implementation of a new component that will be an ideal comparator. So QSpice is the new simulator for electrical and electronics circuits. It has been developed by Mike Engelhardt, the creator of LTSpice, and in this case was developed for this company, Quorvo. Here we have the link to download this simulator. And also, there are several tutorial videos available in YouTube, as shown here, the quick start to QSpice, how to do the importing of third-party models into QSpice, and also how to use C++ and Verilog in QSpice. And for me, this is the important characteristic, the important feature of this new simulator. I think that this is a winner. And this is the reason why this new simulator could become the next generation of SPICE-based simulators. The use of C++-based modules is very interesting. Today, the power electronics industry is becoming more and more based on digital implementations. So this is really interesting because we can do the simulation, including the code that we are going to use in our microcontroller or DSP to control the power converter. So in this video, we are going to see a little bit how to use this program. I'm not going to go into the basic because you can consult this in these videos. So what we are going to do is to see a little bit how the program works and also how to implement components in the program because I think this is the basics. And with this, we will be able to do everything as we have done previously in LTS Vice. Today, we are not going to deal with the implementation of C++ modules, but we will work on this in future videos. So here we have an example of simulation. It's a back converter that we have used in previous videos. So we have the different components. This is the voltage to drive the, the switch. So here we have the definition to create the PWM signal. As we can see in this program, it's much easier to do the definitions of the voltages and so on. We don't need parentheses, we don't need curly brackets. So everything is uh, more friendly. So we have here the definition for the simulation. So now we only have to run the simulation and see the results. I usually do like this to have both. And then we can see here the schematic. And in this part, we can do the plotting of the different waveforms. For example, if we want to see the output voltage, we only have to go here and click on the wire. So this is the output voltage. We can add a new window to see other things. For example, the current through the inductor. We only have to go and hover on the inductor. So clicking on it, we get the current waveform and we can add more windows and see, for example, the gate to, to source voltage. So we can press here and maybe we can modify this to show BGS. So this is the signal and so on. So we can see that is very simple to use, very similar to LTSPICE. We can use parameters to do the different definitions of the waveforms and so on. So if we have used LTSPICE, it's really simple to use QSPICE. It's basically the same and with some simplifications on the definitions and also with different handling of the drawing and so on. But basically, it's very similar. 
So now we are going to see how to create a new component. We are going to see how to create a comparator, an ideal comparator, so we can implement a PWM based on a Sawtooth waveform. So we can do the closed loop simulation of the converter using this comparator and so on. So we have seen previously in this video, LTS Pies number five, how to implement ideal comparators. So this is the component that we are going to implement. It's a comparator. We have the non-inverting input, the inverting input and the output. We have two parameters to select the high value and the low value. And this is the definition that we have for this component. We have included the input resistances at the inputs and between the inputs. So this is the basic implementation using the if function as we have seen in this previous video. So the first thing that we are going to do is to create a folder in which we are going to store our library and our new components. For example, we can do this very conveniently in this folder in documents, QSpice. We can create this folder, my library, and in this folder, we are going to create one text file that is going to include all the SPICE models that we are going to create. For example, we can name this file as mylibrary.lib. And then also in this folder, we are going to have one file for each symbol. For example, for our comparator, we will have this file, which is comparator.qsim. And in this file, we will have the drawing of the symbol. So let's see this very quickly. Here we have this uh, folder, documents, qspice. And I have created here the folder, my library. If we go inside, I have here already the text file, my library.lib. And if I open it, then we can see the definition for the ideal comparator here. And we can add more components below if we want. So we can have all the components in the same file. I think this is the best way to do it. Now to create the symbol, we open the program and then go to file, new and new symbol. So here we have the symbol editor and here we can start doing the drawing by placing the different elements, lines, pins, text and so on. But I think that the easiest way is to open the definition of our component in SPICE so we can copy it with control C and then go back to the program and do control V. So we can do an auto generation of the symbol. We have this question here, shall a symbol be generated for this subcircuit? So we say yes. And then here we have a basic drawing of our component. So now we have the pins and everything, but we don't want a block. So we can remove the, the block and do the drawing. We can move this and place this here. So and this one is going to be maybe here and this other one here. We can move this this way. And now do the drawing. So we can put this here and maybe this one over here. And then we need two parameters, which are the voltages, the high voltage and low voltage. So we can go and place text here and then write v high equal to one for example this is for the parameters of our component another one here which is going to be v low equal to zero and we can see how when we did this then the program is adding here in this window the different attributes so we have the attributes of uh, which is the name of the component, the comparator. Second attribute is the high level and third attribute is the low level. So it's as simple as this. 
we have almost everything so now we can take a look here we have to change here the library file so we go here and select documents qspice my library and search for the library is my library.lib so here we have now very clearly where is going to be the file in which is the definition of our component so this is very very good very clear maybe we can remove the automatic description and add here comparator and now imagine that we don't want to see this um, label here out we want to make it invisible so this took me some time to find out what we have to do is to double click here and to select centered justification by clicking on this dot here and then go out and we get this message here your plot label out will not be visible if you use centered justification is that what you want so we say yes and then we uh, have made invisible the label out now we have to save our component in the same folder as the folder that we have our library so we select here save as we go to documents qspice my library and then save our new symbol in this folder and with this we have ready our library with this new component so now we can test our new component we go back to the program we open qspice and go to this panel here and then we can add our new library right click on the mouse add a symbol directory so we select our folder by going to documents qspice here we have my library so we select the folder and we have now our new library here we have our component and we can see the symbol here in this panel now let's do a quick test we can take our comparator and add a few elements for example we press v to get a voltage source g to get the ground and w to do the wiring like this so now we are going to use here a sinusoidal waveform with offset equal to zero amplitude one volt and one kilohertz for example and now do a transient simulation up to maybe five milliseconds to see five cycles so here a wire and we can edit the wires also for example this with a label in and this one with a label out and we are ready we can run the simulation and see in the waveforms so here we have the input voltage and another window to see the output voltage so we can see that everything is working fine we can change for example the levels if we want here 10 volts and here maybe minus 10 volts run the simulation again so we have everything as expected maybe we can see both together so everything is working well so now as we said at the beginning of the video we can use our comparator to generate the pwm signal for the back converter so here we have the converter operating in closed loop by measuring the output voltage sending this to the compensator and then the output of the compensator goes to the comparator here we have a ramp of 10 volt peak to peak so at the output of the comparator we have the pwn signal for the switch 
and we are passing this signal to the switch using this behavioral voltage source with this expression here equal to the voltage that we have at this point. So now we can run the simulation and see the results. Let's see some waveforms starting by the comparator. Uh, here we have the, the ramp. So this is the waveform in green. This is the output. Maybe we can add another window and see below the output of the comparator, which is the PWM waveform for the switch. So we can see that everything is fine. Maybe we can do a zoom and see better the waveforms. And maybe we can add another window to a fit and then see the output voltage. So we have here an output of 5 volts. We can use the cursor if we want by double clicking here and then we can measure the output voltage. We can see also the current through the inductor and so on. As usual, if you want to save time, you can go to my website. This is the link in the section corresponding to resources. At the bottom, you will find my library for QSPICE and also in my repository at GitHub. Here is the link. There you will find the simulation files. And with this, we get to the end of this presentation. I hope that you find it useful. Please let me know if you have any comment or question. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye now.